Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I just want to let you know that it's uh, a little after 8 a.m. on Sunday. Sundays in our house is laundry day. And I was just waking up and I started thinking to myself, you know what? I wonder how many loads of laundry, when it comes to washing, I could do with a 100 amp lithium iron phosphate battery. So I'm going to go ahead and test that out. So let's get started. All right, to do this test, what I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using a, uh, a 100 amp lithium iron phosphate battery. And it's going to be the one from uh, Uniwix. And I'm going to be attaching it to this uh, 5000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Because I'm not testing whether it could power it or not. I want to just know how many wash cycles I can do with with a with an inverter that I know will power through it uh, but what I'm really wondering is how many wash cycles I can do with 100 amps of power so and what I'm going to be using for the DC side to monitor it is this LNX battery monitor and then I'm also on the AC side I'm going to plug it into uh, this Sonoff Wi-Fi smart battery plug and because these have power monitoring so hopefully I'll be able to pull some information off of this as well. So we can kind of compare the efficiencies and also just how much electricity it takes on the DC and the AC side. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up a battery charger to this to make sure it is at 100%. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and take all this upstairs and hook it up and I'll see you there. Okay, I'm now in my laundry room and I believe I have everything all set up and ready to go. Let's check it out. Okay, what I have is my 100 amp Uniwix battery, uh, and then it's connected to my 5,000 watt uh, pure sine wave inverter by MX Moonfree. I do know that this inverter is pure overkill, but I wanted to make sure that it would power the washer with no problem at all. I have a, uh, a Sonoff uh, energy monitor right here for the AC side. And it's going to be, it's, it's connected to my phone right here, which I'm going to turn on and hopefully be able to monitor in real time. And then also I have my Linux battery monitor right here for the DC side. And I went ahead and set it up so it's at 100 amp hours. Battery is completely full. The settings I'm going to have for the washer. First of all, I want to let you know that this is a Kenmore 90 series. Here's some more information about it. If you're interested in looking it up, you can. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have everything on cold, cold. Uh, everything is going to be a medium load. Uh, I'm not going to overload this thing at all. Everything's just going to be medium. It's going to be one. Uh, it's going to be on one rinse cycle, and everything is going to be washed on uh, regular. So it's going to be slow at first, and then spin dry. The second spin dry will be fast. Yeah, and basically all I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to wash clothes throughout the day. I'm not going to be able to monitor, monitor this 24-7. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm hoping to maybe get four or five wash cycles out of it. Uh, but I'm going to have to wait for the dryer to be done before I can switch stuff over. And the dryer is slower than the washer. I, I'm not going to be coming up here and turning off the inverter after the wash or anything like that. I'm just gonna act like it's a normal clothes washing day. Uh, I'm not gonna do anything special. Uh, I'll try to come up here whenever I hear the dryer buzzing to let me know that it's done. Every time I switch the laundry, I'll make sure and let you guys know as well so we can kind of keep track uh, of how the, the whole process is going. So let me go ahead and turn everything on and get a load of laundry started. Okay, I uh, went ahead and separated all of our clothes and it looks like we'll have at least five loads, if not six. And what I'm actually gonna do is I said I was gonna put the water level on uh, medium, but I'm gonna put it on medium large. So that way uh, all of my loads of laundry will be able to fit in there. I won't have to split them up and make things all weird. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this dial up to medium large so that way that way all the clothes will fit in every, every round. And now, go ahead and close that. My washer is plugged in right here. So let's go ahead and turn on the inverter. Inverter is on. 
and my little monitor right here just just for fun basically uh, and then on the phone you can see that the clothes washer is still offline let's go ahead and it just came on so let's go ahead and turn this on there we go and what we'll do is open it up go to consumption and we're going to do real-time consumption and start okay there we go that started our monitor is going and so let's go ahead and start uh, my clothes are in there i'm doing a wash of towels everything i'm going to set it to 10. so everything will be set on the 10 level also okay and you can see on the dc side we're using you know just 17 watts i mean it's really nothing it's pretty much mostly the inverter and I'm not sure what the phone is going to show, but I'm going to go ahead and keep that on the whole time also. So it is keeping track as well. And that sawn off, I've never used that feature, that, that real time feature before. So hopefully it doesn't, hopefully it doesn't shut off, um, you know, when the phone goes into sleep mode or something like that. That's why I have the, I have the phone plugged into a battery pack. So I don't have to worry about the battery on the phone dying or anything like that. So I'm gonna go, since, and since this is the first load, I'm gonna go ahead and set a timer on my watch. So that way um, I know when this round is over. But after that, I'm basically just gonna be listening for the beeper on the dryer to switch over the laundry. And the dryer, I usually set for an hour. So it's going to be basically an hour between loads. So um, maybe like in the middle of this load, we'll come back up and we'll see kind of where we're at. And my dogs are going bonkers. So, see you in a bit. Okay, so I had to stop the test. Uh, everything was working great. Uh, I came up here after 15 minutes and I noticed that it was on its spin cycle. Uh, but then I looked at the, uh, the LNX monitor and it still said 100 amp hours. And I knew that was wrong. So I, uh, so I thought about it and I was wondering uh, what, what's going on. Uh, can any of you guess what uh, what was wrong the problem was is when I wired up the shunt I had it backwards so it was not reading it it, it wasn't drawing from the battery it the the shunt thought I was pushing electricity into the battery so I brought my battery charger up and I'm charging the battery back to full I stopped the washer and I'm gonna set that back to I turned off the inverter uh, I'll set the washer back and I'm basically going to rewash this first set. So yeah, when you do tests, make sure that everything is correct the first time because no one wants to rewash clean clothes. Okay, after a small 20 minute delay, the battery is charged back up. So we'll go ahead and disconnect it. And let's start the whole process again. So monitor is at 100%, 100 amp hour. Set the washer back to 10 let's go ahead and start it up okay and now the monitor is actually working correctly it's showing that we have 83 hours left and in this first cycle i will uh i will show you how much wattage each cycle of the washer takes uh, from just the wash cycle to the spin cycle uh, so that way you can kind of uh, judge what kind of inverter you would want to get if you did want to recreate this scenario in an off-grid situation. All right, the washer is now on the uh, just a basic wash cycle. So let's see what we're looking at. It looks like we're using about uh, 460 watts. Let's say it's going down uh, 450, 460 watts. So I'll let you know what the, uh, what the spin cycle shows. All right, the spin cycle is just about to start. So let's go ahead and capture that. Oh, let me try that again. I'm gonna open it up, open the lid, and then I'm gonna shut it again. Oh yeah, it jumps over a thousand, a thousand watts on the, on the surge. But it looks like it's holding right at around, uh, oh my God, the whole thing's starting to shake. Oh, and now that it's getting up to speed, it's going down. 
but it was holding at around 8, 850, 875. Now that the uh, the washer is at full spin speed, it's uh, it's lowered down to about 850, 8, or I'm sorry, it's lowered down to about 550 to 560. All right, so once this full cycle is done, we'll see how much uh, battery we have left and we'll start another load. All right, the first load just finished and check this out. It looks like it used about 15 amp hours from this 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. And one thing I do want to mention is uh, I watched it on the second cycle and the second cycle is, uh, is fast. The first one was a slow speed, a slow spin. And then the second one was a, a fast spin. And on that fast spin, uh, I was watching the monitor and I could have swore that I saw it jump up to 2300 watts. I will try to capture that on one of the other loads that we're going to be doing today. But for now, what I'm, I'm just going to continue doing laundry. Um, I'll let you know when the second load is done. We'll see where the battery is at. And after the second load, we're down to 69.6 uh, amp hours. Uh, I want to say some of that was just the amount of time uh, between the wash cycle and when the dryer was finished. So if you are in an off-grid situation, you're not going to have a dryer. So you could probably negate some of that, you know, maybe like 0.4 amp hours. We need to make sure to put that into consideration. So I'm going to stop the dryer. I'm going to go ahead and start a new load and, uh, and go from there. Okay, once again, the dryer is beeping at me. So let's go ahead and see what our battery is at after the third load of laundry. All right, we are looking at 54.1 amp hours. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start the fourth load. I mean, at this point, it looks like I'll be able to do six loads of laundry, but we'll see. Let's keep going. All right, the dryer just turned off, so let's check out where our battery's at. Okay, and after the fourth wash, we are at 37.8 amp hours left in the battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this stuff out of the dryer, move this stuff over, and start another load. Okay, the dryer went off about five minutes ago. And we are at exactly 22% left or 22 amp hours left on our battery. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get this load started and we'll see if it can power through. So let's do it. All right. Well, we are in the final spin cycle and here is what our, uh, what our battery monitor shows right now. The battery monitor shows that there is 5.45 amp hours left. It can only last about another eight minutes and we're drawing 40 amps. Uh, and it just finished and you can see that the voltage is already jumping back up all right and I just refreshed the AC side and it shows that we used 1.05 kilowatts now some of the things to consider when you are wanting to use an off-grid inverter and battery to do to wash your clothes uh, things that I saw while I was doing it is it constantly pulls about 550 watts while it's doing its wash, its wash cycle. And when it does the spin cycle, uh, it, it pulls around 800 watts. But I know for a split second, I saw a surge of over 2000. I'm pretty sure it said 2300 watts. Uh, that's why I wanted to use that 5,000 watt inverter because I had no idea what the surge would be. And when people say that, yeah, the surge can be three times the amount of what it pulls while it's running, they're dead on. So if this is something that you want to do or you, you want to be able to do with some off-grid equipment, you need to make sure and have an inverter that can you know, easily pull 800 watts, but it needs to have a surge capacity of 3000. So I would recommend a 1500 watt inverter to be able to safely wash your clothes off grid. Now, when it comes to the battery, um, you need to be a little bit more specific with your, um, with your battery type. If uh, for lithium iron phosphate, you want to be able to have a battery that can consistently pull 100 amps and you also want a battery that can do a surge of 200 amps because 200 amps is right around 2500 watts 
So you're going to need that, that ability to surge for just a second or two at that higher amperage. All right, and with all that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, if you like this video, please hit that like button. Um, if you have any questions about uh, how I did the test on this video or anything else for that matter, please leave it in the comments. I'll go ahead and leave all of the items I used in this video in the description. So if you want to look more into them, uh, you can easily find them from there. And if you like my content, please consider subscribing. It really helps out. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.